Perfect. Mm. Let's look at this question. You're flying at a true Mach number of 0 0.72 in a sat static air temperature of minus 45 degrees Celsius. At 1000 hours, you are 100 nautical miles from the Charlie Cooper Tango DME and your ETA estimated time of arrival at CPT DME is 1012. ATC asks you to slow down to be at CPT at 1016. What should your new Mach number be? if you reduce speed at 100 nautical miles to go and you have four different options all right perfect this is a basic speed distance time kind of a question to put it in a simple way let's see what the scenario here is you're flying from a part towards a particular dme right so let's put that in straight so we have the dme here right and this is the charlie papa tango dme and you are 100 nautical miles from the DME. Little arc here. This is a 100 nautical mile arc centered at DME, and this is where the aircraft is. So you're right here. All right. Now you're flying at a true Mach number. Let's put the parameters that is given this question down straight. Uh, you're flying at a Mach number of 0.72. And this simply means that uh, your true airspeed is 72 percentage of the locus per sound so the basic mach number idea goes there and you have a static air temperature which is the corrected outside air temperature of minus 45 degree celsius perfect now at one zero zero hours your 100 nautical miles from the dme it's already depicted in the diagram and your eta which is the estimated time of arrival eta at the DME is 1012. It's a very, very regular practice that the aircraft should be timed mainly for separation purposes. So you are estimated to reach there uh, at 1012, which means the whole journey over 100 nautical miles is happening pretty quick over 12, uh, 12 minutes. Right? So if you have that fact here, let's find out the speed of the aircraft. So in such cases, that the speed that we find out using this time and the distance available is the actual speed of the aircraft on the ground which is the ground speed all right so it's the basic speed distance time equation here ground speed is equal to the distance that is covered in nautical miles divided by oops the time in hours and that is going to yield your ground speed in in knots all right now with this question the air traffic controller is inducing a delay of four minutes here and that's a very very common practice to kind of space you with the time and for that reason, they might ask you to kind of delay as against the previously uh, notified ETA. So now you're supposed to reach there at a revised ETA of 1016 hours and hence a four minute delay. Now it's very clear that over the same 100 nautical mile distance, if I need to introduce some kind of a time change, I have to play around with my ground speed. In this case, we are delaying the time, which means I have to reduce my ground speed. Let's see, the whole idea here is to uh, is to induce a delay of four minutes by reducing the ground speed and this will induce four minute time delay all right now how can i reduce the ground speed now we again imagine that nothing much is mentioned in the question about wind and therefore we assume that the wind component which is that which is the tailwind component in this case which you will eventually find out uh, wind component is constant and therefore the only way to reduce or even play around with ground speed for a constant wind component is to uh, change your true airspeed right so to reduce the ground speed now for a given wind component we have to reduce the true airspeed which means i need to find out what my current ground uh, true airspeed is so that my eta is 1012 and then i need to find out what my task would be for an ETA of a revised ETA of 1016. Now, once I get my reduced TAS uh, for a constant local speed of sound, you see the Mach number depends upon true airspeed and local speed of sound. You put the equation down here Mach number is equal to true airspeed divided by local speed of sound. And we know that local speed of sound depends upon the absolute temperature, which is 38.95 root of temperature in Kelvin. And we also know that temperature in Kelvin is equal to temperature in degree Celsius 
added to 273 right perfect so in this case we can see that for a given local speed of sound because the altitude is not changing here and if we assume a constant altitude and therefore the constant temperature i is a temperature and therefore it is um, local speed of sound is also constant and for that reason any decrease in true air speed will correspondingly reduce your Mach number and you are asked to find out the new reduced Mach number. Now also remember this question we initiate the, this reduction Mach number at 100 nautical miles from the station which means we are exactly at the point 100 nautical miles from station where we would be initiating this uh, reduce, reduction Mach number by reducing the true air speed thereby reducing the ground speed and then inducing the uh, time delay of 4 minutes. So here what we are trying to do is we are trying to find out the Mach number therefore for a given local speed of sound I need to find out what the new true air speed is. Perfect. To understand the new true air speed which is right here I need to understand what the wind component is and what the new ground speed should be. Only if I have the ground speed and the wind component I can find out the task. So without any further talking let's just jump into the uh, problem here. Let's find out what the current task is. So here the Mach number is true air speed divided by local speed of sound and therefore true air speed is equal to Mach number into local speed of sound. Well that's it. So what is the Mach number of the question? The Mach number of the question is 0 0.72 which is right here. So let's put that up. 0 0.72 multiplied by Local speed of sound, the equation I have already jotted down here, 38 decimal 95 square root of, now the very very common mistake I have seen where people tend to forget uh, the degree Celsius to Kelvin temperature, we can see that the outside air temperature, the corrected outside air temperature or the static air temperature is given as minus 45, now mind it, it's in degree Celsius, therefore it's minus 45 plus 273 degree Celsius. Let's find out what the new true air speed would be. Right, that is 423 decimal 45 knots. So I tend to keep the decimals a bit intact uh, until I, I find the final answer. So it's 423.45 is the current true air speed. All right, now let's find out what the ground speed is. Now we need to cover 100 nautical miles this time in 12 minutes. This is the previous scenario here. We have where the estimated time of arrival is 1012. 100 nautical miles is over 12 minutes. Therefore, ground speed, the basic equation is speed is equal to distance by time. If the distance is in nautical miles here, and the time should be in hours for you to have a ground speed obtained in knots. The distance here is 100 nautical miles divided by now mind that the time is 12 minutes be very very careful with the conversion you have to multiply with 60 it's quite simple here it's 500 straight therefore your ground speed is 500 knots now if you kind of compare the true air speed with the ground speed here you can see true air speed of the task is 423.45 and your ground speed is 500 knots there's an obvious tailwind right so let's find out what the wind component is Wind component will be in this case your ground speed minus true air speed, which is 500 minus 423.45, which is around 76.55 knots. And remember, it's not so much of tailwind here. Perfect. Now, since we have the wind component here and we assume that the wind component is not going to change, let's find out what the new ground speed would be or rather it is a reduced ground speed for a delay of 16 minutes as against 12 minutes here. So again the ground speed, the revised or the new ground speed in knots is again, the distance is again same, we are still considering the same 100 nautical miles. Remember the delay is initiated at 100 nautical miles from the station. Now the delay is amounting to 16 minutes with a 4 minute delay into 60 and that would amount to 375 knots. All right, so now the new ground speed or reduced ground speed would be 375. You can see the initial ground speed was 500 here and reduced ground speed is 375, reduction of 125 knots to cope up with this uh, four minute time delay. All right, perfect. Now since the reduced ground speed is 375 knots and since we assume that the wind component 
is not changing anywhere as mentioned in the question we can now find out what the true airspeed is remember we have a tailwind here which means the true airspeed is less than the ground speed so the true airspeed or TAS is equal to the ground speed minus your tailwind component the ground speed is 375 the new or the reduced ground speed is 375 minus the exact same wind component tailwind of uh, 766 sorry 76.55 knots and that is 266 is 2908 decimal 45 knots of TAS so you can very clearly see that our initial TAS over here was 423.45 and you have to reduce it to 2908 decimal 45 to kind of uh, induce this delay here now for this particular task let's find out what the Mach number would be and as discussed before the Mach number which is a ratio of true air speed to local speed of sound is going to change only because of change in task because the local speed of sound is constant as there is no change in temperature uh, due to change in altitude here right so perfect so let's find out what the task would be sorry the Mach number would be the Mach number is equal to the reduced Mach number will be let me just put it in a better way reduced or the new Mac number is equal to your reduced task divided by local speed of sound and we can derive the local speed of sound probably from uh, what we uh, found before here 30 is 95 root of minus 45 plus 273 therefore the new Mach number will be reduced to just 2908 decimal 45 knots divided by local speed of sound is 38 decimal 95 if you already have the answer kind of framed in the previous uh, part of it you can just take it drop it straight I'm just finding it out again minus 45 plus 273 go back to the question here you can see the temperature is minus 45 hence it's here let's find out the answer that is 0 0.507 now let's go back to the options here the option is 0 0.67 and 0 0.60 is out of the question now it's close enough 0 0.5 from 51 and since it's 0 0.507 we can round this off to 0 0.51 and hence delta is the answer let me give you a quick brush up here what we've done here is we are trying to reduce your uh, to, to induce some time delay that can be done by reducing the ground speed uh, ground speed for a given wind component can be reduced by reducing the true air speed now with the reduced true air speed and assuming that we don't change the level and therefore the local speed of sound being constant will reduce your Mach number and you'll have to find out what the reduced Mach number is so the Mach number is reduced from 0 0.72 all the way to 0 0.51 which means the TAS is now 51 percentage of the local speed of sound. I hope this question is clear. It's a very random question that got dropped out to me. And if you have any confusions, drop down in the comments and I'll get back to you.